For those that remember the Wild West era of online games, lobby-based multiplayer was all the rage back during the mid to late 2000s. Just to name a few that fell under this genre would be Guns, Pena, Cart Rider, and Elsword. Another would be the subject of this video being Lost Saga, a competitive free-to-play fighting online game created by South Korean developers IO Entertainment. Similar to fighting games, Lost Saga had a vast roster of different characters to play as, each with their own unique fighting styles and kits that could be compared somewhat to how characters work in MOBA games like League of Legends or Dota. Players could unlock fighters, level them up, go fishing, hang out in lobbies to chat, and generally just pummel each other in its online PvP matches. It never garnered an enormous amount of players, but Lost Saga had its loyal fanbase. But as most of these older games go, it began to slump into obscurity. In Lost Saga's case, a little more than obscurity. Try actual non-existence, at least in the North American market. It's fully playable in other markets though, so why cover a game that has no playable English version available even through private servers? I don't know. The game can still potentially be picked up one day if a publisher is willing to scoop it up and release it, so it's not completely dead, it's just in a perpetual state of hopelessness. So you're telling me there's a chance. Let's briefly talk about the bumpy road that Lost Saga has had in the Western markets, and maybe if there is enough buzz, see if Lost Saga is dead or alive, at least over here in North America. Using the old handy dandy Wayback Machine, I was able to find Lost Saga's earliest notes of development back in 2007 on the Lost Saga website. Most of the website is broken since Flash doesn't work anymore, but the first couple of articles talking about the game on the website that I could find talks about the training mode, dynamic facial expressions, and internal alpha testing. Based on the dates of the articles, one can assume Lost Saga probably started conceptualizing a year or two before 2007. Looking at further articles into the years leading up to its release, it seems like alpha testing and closed beta testing began sometime in 2007 and 2008. Players would simply sign up for the testing via their site. Fast forward to October of 2009, where beta testing in the North American market began. The beta in the West consisted of only a few heroes being playable, with the full roster being available when the game launched in the West under a fairly known name for hosting Eastern-based online games, OG Planet. OG Planet at the time was a pretty big publisher in North America that bring many foreign MMOs to the Western market. Notable titles OG Planet localized included Letale, Rumble Fighter, and Uncharted Waters Online. OG Planet would support Lost Saga for a short four years before handing off the game to a publisher named We Made USA in 2013, who subsequently handed it off again to another publisher named Z8 Games. Z8 Games would host the game for its longest period in the North American market, having it from 2013 to 2019. During that time, it launched on Steam on November 27th, 2014, opening it up to a larger audience than ever before. More modes and heroes were added to the game over the years, with a hero count hitting at least 100 or so different fighters to play as. Probably some of the more popular heroes included the cross-event promotional heroes that were taken from other properties, such as being able to play as Soul Bad Guy from Guilty Gear or various characters from Blaze Blue. Kind of reminds me of how Fortnite runs promotional characters during their events to bring in new players. Z8 Games would host Lost Saga for six years this time, shutting down its support on September 13th, 2019. Players said their goodbyes to Lost Saga in the West as it continued to be supported in other regions. About two years passed until there was an announcement by Papaya Play, another publisher that localized foreign MMOs announced that they would be picking up Lost Saga. Their announcement took place in February of 2021 with a closed beta running that same month. Papaya Play also announced that the game would launch April 6, 2021, so players wouldn't have to 
to wait long to enjoy Lost Saga again. Unfortunately, players would be hit with a shocking announcement less than 24 hours before servers were going to launch. Papaya Play would announce that they would be pulling the plug on the launch of Lost Saga, claiming issues between them and the developers of the game. Apparently, the main differences between Papaya Play and the developers was the subject of the life cycle of the game. Papaya wanted to host the game indefinitely, or at least as long as possible. The developers intended for the game to only be hosted for a set amount of time. A weird business model for sure, which is probably why Papaya decided not to launch at all if they couldn't keep the game under their umbrella of services. Lost Saga has been in a state of limbo more or less ever since. The game is arguably dead here in the North American market, at least until a publisher one day decides to pick up the game and host an English version. Until that day comes, all we have are memories of it. There are small communities out there that talk fondly of this game. There is a Reddit that gets some activity every now and then, where you can learn about private servers in other languages and discussion on if the game would do well in today's market. Considering the other factors of its downfall though, I'm not entirely sure Lost Saga would be able to have a great spot in today's market. A diehard fan base for sure, but a steady level of players? I'm not convinced. One of the biggest problems with small niche games like this is their lack of notable advertisement. MapleStory made a mark on the world through sheer popularity, as well as heavy advertisement campaigns back in the day. To be able to do that in 2022 is almost impossible unless you strike gold through social media. Think about how powerful influencers are when it comes to video games. Among Us is a prime example of a small game that became a massive cultural hit due to video game influencers. Lost Saga would need that sort of luck to rise into the ranks of popularity, otherwise it would stay as an incredibly small footnote in the PvP online space. I'm not saying it's not possible, but until we actually get a re-release, we'll never know. In terms of my personal experience with Lost Saga, I did play it briefly back sometime in 2010 in college. I had a couple fun nights with the game, just shooting the sh with a few players beating up on each other until I would get bored and hop on the tail. To me, a game like Lost Saga just didn't have a lot of meat to it. You basically played a few PvP matches and then logged off. Friends who liked PvP games were either playing Counter-Strike or League of Legends, so to get others into Lost Saga was already an uphill battle, and that's my overall point with it. Lost Saga would need something new to bring to the table other than its chibi anime look. Otherwise, it will never break away from its small niche title. If it had more balance, more unique modes, and a competent advertisement campaign behind it, its best case resurgence would be to have it become something of an eSport title to rocket the game into the mainstream audience. But that's just my opinion. Now, I ask you, the audience, what is your experience with Lost Saga? Did you play it back in the day? Do you remember it fondly, or was this one of those small games you skipped over? Comment your time with Lost Saga in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to support my content. Follow all my social media links in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next video.